So, just to remind you, at least for nearby stars, we can determine their distance using the parallax. We can do that for stars that are uh, up to 160 light years away from ground-based telescopes, from above the atmosphere, we can go even to higher distances uh, than that. So once you know the distance, you measure the brightness of the star, and then using this relationship between brightness, luminosity, and distance, you can figure out the energy output of the star. Okay? And then we'll learn later that once you know the luminosity of the star, and uh, uh, if it is uh, in the same state as our sun, that is, uh, it is a main sequence star, then you can actually find out how massive it is. And by knowing its energy output and its mass, that is amount of fuel available to it to produce the energy, you can figure out how long it's going to live. Okay? Uh, that is, you can figure out the lifetime of the star. Uh, So-called main sequence star. And we'll learn more about that later. And once you know the mass of the star, then you can determine its lifetime. Uh, basically, the lifetime is given by the ratio of the fuel available divided by the energy output. Right? It's the same like with your car. I mean, uh, the, the, the fuel uh, that your car has for the trip is determined by the volume of the fuel tank, right? So you have, say you have uh, 50 liters fuel tank. How long it's going to last, it depends on the energy usage. The faster you drive, you use, you spend more energy. Higher, uh, the the uh, uh, power output of the engine has to be uh, higher in order to maintain the higher speed. So if you are using, say, I don't know, to simplify things, uh, uh, 10 liters per 100 kilometers, right? And you have 50 liter tank, you can drive 500 kilometers. The same here. The fuel available is basically given by the mass of the star. And energy output is basically its luminosity. Okay? So once you know the mass and the luminosity, you can figure out how long the star is going to live. 